I know we've already been worshiping the Lord for a little bit, but can we just take another minute and focus our hearts on Jesus? honor you. God, we honor your presence here among us. We don't ever take your presence for granted, Lord. But we just want to say that we love you and that we need you and that you're really all that we want. We honor you, God. We love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you, God. Help us today, God, to get our eyes on you. You've been speaking to us this whole morning, but God, help us to get our eyes focused on you today. Let us not walk out of here focused on any other thing but King Jesus. Lord, capture every heart this morning. Capture our attention. Lord, help us today to focus on you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Can you switch to the screen up here? Thank you, Kevin. Whew, I'm just a mess up here. Man. Man. I just love Jesus, man. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, thank you guys for inviting us to be here today. Um, Today's not random. I think everybody senses that. Uh, Today is very purposeful in the heart of God for us to all be together. Um, It's kind of funny. I found an old video this week from Father's Day 2011 where I was preaching at the gathering nine years ago. And... uh, so it's just kind of funny how things come all the way around full circle. But, but the greatest delight of the Father's heart is his son, Jesus Christ. And so this morning on Father's Day, I know most of the time we focus on the Father. But today I want to focus on the Father's heart, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You just have to give me a minute. I'm still trying to get my composure back here goodness gracious so I do have something very specific that I feel like the Lord has has told me to do today Um, two things but the first one is going to be prophetic in nature obviously this church is not uh, far into the prophetic this is pretty normal for us to all be prophetic Uh, but then we're going to shift gears and go into something different First of all, on the prophetic side, I'm sure you guys recognize this, but Jenny and JT were up here prophesying for about 45 minutes straight. 
pretty much every word that came out was a prophetic word. I mean, it was just directly what the Lord is saying. So like Jesus said, he who has an ear, <laughs> let him hear. God's speaking very clearly to us today, and he's going to give us some instruction for the days ahead. How many of you guys know it's better to be prepared than to be unprepared? Okay. So, you know, we always talk about the physical preparations. You know, we stockpile things. We got guns and bullets and food and water and stuff, but, but there's also a spiritual preparation that we, have to, that we have to go through, right? And that's mostly what I'm going to talk about today. But just in short order, uh, two Sundays ago, so 14 days ago today, um, one of my spiritual mentors, a guy that I've known since 1998 that's been a mentor to me personally, a man that's very close to the Lord and has a very solid walk with the Lord, the Lord woke him up two Sunday mornings ago and spoke something to him very clearly. And as he was coming awake, the Lord spoke and said, mass insurrection is coming soon. And he didn't even fully know what that meant, so he Googled the word insurrection like we all do. And the word insurrection means a violent, deliberate attempt to overthrow a government. And so we know that we're living in some crazy times. I don't have to tell you that. You guys are a prophetic church. I don't have to tell you. That's why I said I'm not going to focus on the prophetic today. We're going to go somewhere different. But I want to say this. In 2020, the Lord spoke to us and, and we shared it you know, with, with our congregation. The Lord told us that 2020, our prophetic word was this, it's time to shine. And it came so emphatically and so clearly that we knew, man, everything that happens in 2020 is going to be around us shining as the church. So that's the paradigm we entered into 2020 with. Had no idea what kind of chaos would ensue. But then I got to thinking about this the other day. If you walk outside right now on a bluebird sunny day and you look up in the sky, you can't see the stars. But if I walk outside at midnight tonight and I look up, I will see stars everywhere. We shine in the dark. And so what Jesus was telling us when he said it's time to shine is he was also saying it's getting ready to get dark. But that's not a fearful thing, it's a glorious thing. If, there's a big if, if you're with him. If you're with the world, all you're going to have is the dark. If you're with him, you're going to shine like the brightness of the stars. It's Daniel. So everything that I'm going to say today is going to be about us as a church shining in darkness. And I know that David's been preaching this for as long as I have known him, so this is not going to be new. That's why I said I'm not going to focus on the prophetic side. Actually, what the Lord told me very clearly today, he said, I don't want you to come with a prophetic word today. I want you to come with an apostolic word today. And by God's grace, that's what I'm going to attempt to do. I believe it's Ephesians 2.22 that says that the foundation of the church is laid by the apostles and the prophets. And what is that foundation? It is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There is no other foundation there is no other message. There's no other anything that we can build our lives upon other than the, the rock himself, Jesus Christ. True apostolic preaching is the revealing of the person of Jesus Christ. So I don't want you to walk out of here today focused on current events. I want you to leave out of here today focused on the king. Amen? Amen. The king is coming. We know this, but we're going to look at him and see him before he comes, right? Yes. So I know I'm going slow, but I'm just, I'm wanting this to settle because these are serious things today that, that we're going to get into. But we fought for a couple hours this morning to get the screens to work, and we finally did get that to work. Uh, we fought very hard because uh, I use a lot of scriptures and I want you guys to be able to really absorb as much of this as you can. If you only hear it, you get so much, but if you can hear it and see it, you can, you can get more of it, right? So this morning what we're going to be talking about is the focal point. And I want to go straight to Webster's for a definition because there's an actual thing called the focal point. Here's the definition. The point on the axis of a lens or a mirror to which parallel rays of light converge. The point at which all elements or aspects converge. 
It is the center of activity or attention, the central or principal point of focus. The focal point is also called principal focus. Just keep tracking with me. Synonym, centerpiece. You see where we're going with this? Jesus Christ is the focal point of all creation. Literally, all things are summed up in Christ. Jesus Christ is the focal point of the Father. It's Father's Day. Do you know what the focus of the Father is? His Son, Jesus Christ. It's his greatest delight. It's his greatest joy is his own Son. And we're grafted in, thank God. Jesus Christ is also the focal point of the Holy Spirit. The Father's talking about Jesus. The Holy Spirit's talking about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And some of this, it's okay, you can clap. Some of this stuff is going to be maybe basic, but I'm telling you, it is fundamental to the gospel that we believe. If we miss this, we miss it all. If we don't really get this message, we won't understand the rest of the messages. Because this is the foundation that we have to lay. Now here's the shocker. I just said that Jesus is the focal point of all creation. Jesus is the focal point of the Father. Jesus is the focal point of the Holy Spirit. Here's the shocker. The only place that Jesus Christ is not the focal point is in the hearts of men. The only place in all of the universe that Jesus Christ is not the focal point is in the hearts of men. That's a sobering reality. But this morning, those of us who are gathered here, we're going to make sure that we've got this right. We're going to have the focal point where it needs to be. Amen? You guys good? I want to talk about the supremacy of Christ. And I want to be honest with you, I've been in church my whole life. I jokingly say that I was in church nine months before I was born, which is true. I also jokingly say that when I was young, I had a drug problem. My mom drugged me to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every prayer meeting. I mean, I've been in church my whole life, right? I can't count on one single hand how many messages I've heard on the supremacy of Jesus Christ. And how many hundreds, if not thousands of messages have I personally heard in my lifetime? How many messages have you heard? And then how many messages have you heard on the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ? He's the focal point. This is apostolic preaching. So we're going to get into scripture. You guys can follow along with your Bibles or you can see them on the screen. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to get the screens working today. Colossians 1, starting in verse 15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. (laughs) That one thing alone is enough to marinate on the rest of your life. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus Christ perfectly revealed the Father. My goodness. Verse 16, for through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Did you notice that it said every ruler, every kingdom, every authority in the unseen world? What do you think that's talking about? Do you know that Satan is God's devil? Does that make sense? God is a million steps ahead of the devil always and uses him to accomplish his own purposes. Look at the cross of Jesus Christ. The scriptures say that if the rulers knew what they were doing, they would not have crucified him. They didn't understand God was a million steps ahead of them. They thought they won. Every satanic ruler and every human that had been influenced by those satanic things, everybody thought they beat Jesus and that they won. And we know that it, in fact, turned into the greatest victory of all. Amen? So I want to cautious us all this morning that 
Sometimes defeats in the natural, things that look like defeats, are actually spiritual victories. See, heaven has a perspective and earth has a perspective. And I'm gonna confess, and I think we would agree, many times we are so bombarded with earth's perspective that we're not hearing heaven's perspective. And we, no matter how much we love Jesus, can get swept away with the natural way of what's going on. But there's victory that doesn't look like victory. Persecution doesn't look like victory, what you were talking about. So in the spiritual realm, it's, it's different. We're like an upside down kingdom, right? Actually, we're right side up, the world's upside down. But verse 17, he existed, this is Jesus, before anything else, and he holds all creation together. The person of Jesus Christ holds the entire universe together. If he let go of it, everything would cease to exist. Jesus Christ is the focal point of the universe. Verse 18, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. Praise God. That should be self-evident. There's only one head of the church, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm not the head of, of the Father's house, and David's not the head of the gathering. We're shepherds. We do what God's called us to do, but there's one head, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The focal point. For God in all of his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. Can you even wrap your mind around the physical person of Jesus Christ walking on planet earth and the fullness of God lived in Christ? I don't think that we have even scratched the surface of understanding who Jesus is. Verse 20, and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Hallelujah, that's why we're all sitting here this morning. So I'm gonna go to Hebrews chapter one, verse one. And I'm going slow on purpose. I want us to really think about these things. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. See, there's your prophetic words. But now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. It's right up there on that big blue banner out the door. And through the son, he created the universe. Are you starting to see the bigness of our Jesus? My same friend who had this encounter with God two Sundays ago, the next week saw a vision of Jesus putting his foot down and he said his foot was the size of a state. Jesus is not a little Jesus. When he walked on the earth, he was our size, but, but Jesus is big. Jesus fills all and is all. The sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. Man, these scriptures are rich. He sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Everything in this whole entire universe is sustained by the word. What did, what did it say in Revelation 19 when Jesus comes back? What's his name? The word of God. He sustains everything by his word. He is the word. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. Man, aren't these scriptures amazing? So I'm gonna just keep going. Jesus is the focal point of all scripture. Do you wanna have correct biblical interpretation? Do you wanna not get in trouble? Do you wanna not fall into false doctrine? Do you not wanna go with every wind and every wave? Jesus Christ is the focal point of all scripture. He is the ultimate revelation of scripture. I don't have my physical Bible, I usually have it on my phone, but literally that is all Jesus. It's all about Jesus, it is Jesus. So listen to this, in the Old Testament, Jesus is predicted. In the Gospels, he's revealed. 
In the book of Acts, he's preached. In the epistles, he's explained. And in Revelation, he's expected. He's the whole thing. I, I am getting chills up here. When I talk about Jesus, when I talk about the supreme, the supremacy of Christ, man, if this doesn't mess you up, I don't know what. This is the message. The person of Jesus Christ is the primary revelation of the Bible. There are many wonderful truths in the word of God. I love the word. Now, David knows this because he's known me a long time. I committed to the Lord many years ago that I would never go a day of my life without reading the word. And I don't. It's just a commitment that I've made. I'm not going to not be in the word of God. But what I have understood is that Jesus Christ is the primary revelation of the word of God. He's the whole point. I know I'm saying this repetitively but that's deliberate too <laughs> we're gonna get this i want to talk about the road to emmaus we all remember this story it's kind of a humorous story the guys are walking with jesus but they don't know it's jesus it's kind of a fun, it's after the resurrection you guys know so let's read it in luke 24 verse 25 then jesus said to them you foolish people man jesus was always so politically correct you foolish people you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering into his glory? Now listen to this verse. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This is Jesus preaching Jesus through the whole Bible. I would sell my house to get that DVD. <laughs> Jesus preaching Jesus and revealing his whole self to two guys walking on the road. Amen. Yeah, it said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Uh, you think? It doesn't get more anointed than Jesus preaching Jesus. But yeah, right. So now we get to do that. And that's what we're doing this morning. That's why you feel the power and the anointing on this, because it's Jesus. Luke 24, 32. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn <laughs> within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Isn't that amazing? We all need a road to Emmaus encounter. We need Jesus to reveal himself to us. Amen. In fact, that's a great prayer. Why don't we pray that, Lord? We need an Emmaus Road encounter. Jesus, reveal yourself to us. We know you, but we don't know you enough. We don't know you like we need to. God, reveal yourself in us, through us. God, reveal yourself. In Jesus' name. We're going to keep going. Colossians 2, verse 16 and 17. So don't let anyone condemn you. Now listen to this. I'm getting ready to ruffle some feathers intentionally. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come and Christ himself is that reality. I've seen so many well-meaning people focus on the shadows as if it's the reality. What day you do this, what festival you do this, where you go, with, and all these things point to Jesus and that's fine and you can celebrate them, but they are never to eclipse the reality which is Jesus. I for one am not willing to settle for a shadow when I can have the reality. I'm thankful for everything that was foreshadowed in the Old Testament. I'm thankful for everything that pointed to Christ. But now I can have Christ. Amen. Is that enough said? Any teaching that eclipses the centrality of Jesus Christ will become a false idol. Do you think and how many false idols do we have in the church? 
The word eclipse means to be bigger than, to overshadow. We have many good messages that we need to preach. I'm a preacher. I preach many messages. But I never preach anything that eclipses the centrality of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's got to be about him. It's got to always be about him. Apostolic preaching is the preaching of Christ in all of his fullness. And I'm going to say this. We've all been prophetic, but I believe the Lord is now asking us to be apostolic. Not that we don't need prophetic, because we do. I started this thing with prophetic. They sang prophetic. But we've got to take this into a place called apostolic Christianity. And it is all about the centrality of Jesus Christ. All about Jesus. The richness of Christ is inexhaustible. What I've shared this morning would, would just whet your appetite. This is not the end all. This is a starting point for us to get a hunger in our hearts to see and to know Jesus in all of his fullness. And we can spend all of the rest of our lives, and get this, we'll spend all of eternity doing that. One lifetime down here is not even enough for us to even fully exhaust the richness of Christ. I think maybe that's why we have to live forever, because it'll take that long. You think when you get to heaven, it's all done. No, you will still be beholding his glory. You will still be knowing and learning his ways. You will still be getting to see him. What do they do 24-7 around the throne? Holy, 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 holy. And when they come back around, it's like the first time they ever saw him. It never stops. It never stops. That kind of glory. My goodness. (laughs) The absolute best thing we can do for our spiritual life is simply to focus on Jesus. Now that might sound basic, that might sound generic. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, we know we've got to focus on Jesus. No, like for real. (laughs) We've got to focus on Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to go back into prophetic mode for a second. The times that are getting ready to come upon us you are going to have to be extremely intentional not to lose your focus. And I'm going to go on record, and please hear me. If you got an IV hooked into your arm from any news outlet, you're going down the tubes. You better have an IV into this. (laughs) Because the world is going to shake, rattle, and roll, baby. And it will be so easy for us. Oh my God, did you see that? Oh my God, what did they do? Oh my God, look. Ah, and we will get so bum fuzzled, but just, just focus on Jesus. That's what JT's saying. That song today was all about the world is going nuts, but our eyes are on Jesus. If the Lord didn't send me here for anything else this morning, get that. The days that we're going into, there's one prescription. Focus on Jesus. It's the only way. It's the only way. I want to read a couple more scriptures here. Are you guys still hanging with me? Everybody good? I don't want to wear you out, but I want you to get this. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. There it is again. This is what it's about. And we're so easily caught up in so many things. But devotion to Jesus Christ is the whole point. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Verse 2. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. And I love this translation. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. We'll keep going. Colossians 2, 6 through 10. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down deep into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. 
Listen to this verse. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. That's the battle that we're in right there. Don't let anyone, I don't care who it is and how many good intentions they have, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies, high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking, from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. And you know what the next verse says? Here's the kicker. So you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. What he's saying is that we now are in Christ the same way that Christ was in the Father. Meditate on that one for a couple years. Colossians 9 and 10 is mind-bending. God put his fullness in Jesus Christ, and now we're in Jesus Christ. We don't, even, we don't even know who we are. We don't even understand. I mean, this is, this is who we are. 2 Corinthians 3.13, I'm just gonna keep reading scriptures and this is the last part. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they can't understand the truth. And this veil can only be removed by believing in Christ. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But listen to this. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. How many of you guys have had the veil taken away? I once was blind, but now I see. For the Lord is the Spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit, listen to this, I love this, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. We become like Jesus by beholding Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other focus. There's no other focal point. I appreciate every message, but there's no message greater than Jesus Christ. There's no person greater than Jesus Christ. Everything is summed up, Ephesians says, in Christ. I know it might feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but I am trying to drive this thing home that the centrality of Jesus Christ is the apostolic message that the church has to rise up and declare right now in this hour, in the day that we are walking into. It's wonderful to have prophetic words and to know what's happening, thank God, because I would much rather know than not know. But then I'm a practical guy and I go, now what? Thank you for telling me, now what? Apostolic is the now what? Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. Fix your eyes on Jesus. This is the battle that we're in. There are a million and one things that are going to come against this one thought right here. Every good, bad, indifferent thing that's going to come our way is for one purpose to get our minds off of Jesus. You guys always think about Peter walking on water and we know that when he lost his focus, he fell into the water. Jesus had to grab him up, right? And then Jesus very kindly said, oh, you have little faith. He said that a lot, actually. Oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Why did you look at the wind? Why did you look at the waves? Why did you start thinking, hey, I'm not supposed to be able to walk on water? Why did you just lose your focus on just looking at me? Because I'm telling you, and we know this is true, if Jesus and Peter would have kept their eyes locked on each other, I promise you Jesus would have walked all the way to him. You know that he would have. But Peter's just like us, we're so easily distracted. And how many times this morning did they prophesy 
that God is trying to deal with fear today. Because you want to know what one of your biggest distractions is going to be in the days ahead? Fear. Okay. Fear and faith are going in two different ways, right? Now, there'll be frightening things for sure. I mean, you know, there's going to be things that we could be fearful about. But if we were fix our eyes on Jesus, we'll be able to weather any storm. That's why I love worship so much. You know, worship, pure worship, is simply getting your attention and your focus back onto him. That's what it is. I mean, I like good music, and I like, you know, people that can sing. I think that's great, but, but ultimately, all we're trying to do is get people's focus on him. That's the whole point. It's not a show. I mean, this is the point. We want everybody, including us, to focus on Jesus. That's why when I got up here in the beginning, I couldn't even do anything else. I couldn't get past that. And I don't ever want to get past that. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. And God, I pray that it's penetrated all of our hearts this morning. And I pray, God, that we would be aware, that we would be prophetically informed. But more than that, God, that we would be a people that through it all are going to keep our gaze set on you. That we would be a people that are going to keep our focus on Jesus Christ, who is the coming king. We pray it all the time, and we've prayed it for 2,000 years. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, but we know there's a lot of stuff that's going to transpire before that. And Lord, we know that every kingdom will shake. We know that everything that can be shaken will be. We understand this. We know this. We know that gross darkness will cover the land and the people, but the glory of the Lord is going to shine through his church, through his people. So like Paul said, who is equal to such a task? Lord, help. Help us, God, to keep our focus on Jesus. Lord, we're going to need you to coach us every day. When we start drifting in any way, you're going to have to rally our attention back to Jesus. Holy Spirit, you always lead us to Jesus. Prophecy always leads us to Jesus. Apostolic preaching always leads us to Jesus. We just want to focus on you, and we don't want to lose that that focus, God. In Jesus' name.